Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I have a haul for you all. So these are the books I've kind of accumulated for Christmas. So I bought some books in December, um, and then I got some books for Christmas, and then some of these are books that were sent to me from publishers, um, either in December or early January. And then some of these are books I just bought in January too. I'm still on my ban, so um, a lot of the books are books I bought in December, so I'm still doing good on my ban. Like, I've only bought a couple of books in January, and those were like kind of out of necessity, so I'm still doing good. We're gonna start with the books I bought, then move into gifts and publish sent books and go from there. So first, um, my fairy loot for December, the last book of 2021, um, is Year of the Reaper by Makia Lucier. So I've never actually heard of this book. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect. But it's really pretty. I love the black sprayed edges. I love the cover. Um, let's look at the naked cover and see, like, that's pretty cute. So, um, I'm here for it. I don't really know much about it. Let's see, three years ago, Lord Cassia disappeared in the midst of a war on a mission entrusted to him by the king. Since then, a devastating plague has swept the land, leaving Callus dead and the kingdom forever altered. Having survived a rotting prison cell and a merciless illness, Cass now 18 wants only to return to his home in the mountains and forget past wars. But home is not what he remembers. His castle has become a refuge for the royal court, and they have brought their enemies with them. When an assassin targets those closest to the queen, Cass is drawn into a search for a killer, one that leads him to form an unexpected bond with a brilliant young historian named Lena. Cass and Lena soon realize that who is behind the attacks is far less important than why. They must look to the past, following the trail of, ter of a terrible secret, one that could threaten the kingdom's newfound peace and plunge it back into war. Interesting. I haven't heard much about this yet from anybody, so I'm gonna keep my ear out for it. So, um, one of the first books I bought in December was uh, Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book to Nevermore. Um, I gave Nevermore three stars, I believe, last year when I read it, um, but I'm still intrigued enough in the story, and I figured I would go ahead and just snag this, um, just to have it on hand when I get in the mood to read it again. In case you don't know, so Nevermore is, Nevermore is about a girl who was born on a cursed day, and so all the children who are born on this day have to die, I think their 12th year of life. So the day of her 12th birthday, this man comes and takes her away to Nevermore, which is this world of wonder, basically. And so there she has to compete to enter into this society so that she can live a full life and not have to worry about dying, basically. I am down to check this out and hopefully it's good. The second book I got was Wild Card, which is the second book to Warcross. Um, I went ahead and snagged it since this is just a duology and it was only $3 from Books A Million, so that's why I just went ahead and grabbed it, especially because I had the first book in paperback, so I definitely wanted the second book in paperback. Um, but when I eventually get to this tr this duology, I will be set and ready to go, and I'm here for that. Next, I also got Hunting Prince Dracula, which is the second book to Stalking Jack the Ripper. Um, this was also $3 and in paperback, which is why I snagged it. I think I'm getting around this ban by justifying the fact that I'm buying sequels. I don't know, but here we go. Next, I grabbed A Curse So Dark and Lowly by Bridget Kimmerer. So, um, I heard interesting things about this trilogy, and I finally decided I was gonna give it a chance. So I went ahead and I bought the first one. Um, I know Chanel really enjoyed it for the most part, and I think maybe Cell too. So I wanna check it out and see if I could enjoy it don't know but we're going with it next I got King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair I've heard interesting things about this um, as a fantasy romance book so I'm kind of in my romance bag right now this last half of 2021 and then 
the beginning of this year I've read a lot of romance and I've enjoyed a lot of them so I'm just gonna follow the momentum <laughs> and I've been picking up um, fantasy romance as well to see if this is like a subgenre I could also get into um, so far it has been an adventure but I figured I would give this one a try too. Next, I snagged um, Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This one sounded intriguing to me, so I went ahead and snagged it as well. Um, I still haven't really read a Christina Lauren book. I think the only one I read was their YA um, book. I can't think of the name right now, but I enjoyed that one for the most part, so it led me to want to give their adult romance a try. Um, I might turn it into a vlog because I have a couple of their books so I figured since I have a good number I might as well just vlog me giving them a chance so let me know if you would love to see that and I'll film it <laughs> but yeah I'm definitely hyped for this book um, let's see it's about a single mom Jessica Davis is a data and statistics wizard but no amount of number crunching can convince her to step back into the dating world raised by her grandparents who now help her raise her seven-year-old daughter juno just has been left behind to often too often to feel comfortable letting anyone in after all her father was never around her hard partying mother disappeared when she was six and her ex decided he wasn't father material before juno was even born jess holds her loved ones close but working constantly to stay afloat is hard and lonely but then jess hears about genetically genetic ally Genetically, I don't know, a buzzy new DNA-based matchmaking company that's predicted to change dating forever. Finding a soulmate through DNA, the reliability of numbers, this just understands. At least she thought she did, until her test shows an unheard of 98% compatibility with another subject in the database. One of Genetically's founders, Dr. River Penna. This is one number she can't wrap her head around, because she already knows Dr. Penna. The stuck-up stubborn man is without a doubt not her soulmate. But Genetically has pr a proposition. Get to know him and we'll pay you. Jess, who is barely making ends meet, is n in no position to turn it down, despite her skepticism about the product and her dislike for River, as the pair are dragged from one event to the next, as the, oh, sorry, <laughs> diamond match that could launch genetically valuation sky high. Jess begins to realize that there might be more to the scientist and the science behind a soulmate than she thought. I'm here for it. I like matchmaking stories, so. I'm kind of here. It kind of reminds me of that episode of Zoe 101, but with genetics, so we'll give it a try. So next I grabbed um, another Jill Shalvez book, The Family You Make. This is the beginning of, of another like companion series she's starting, and it sounded really interesting, so I just snagged it because I love her books. <laughs> Let's see. During the snowstorm of a century, Levi Cutler is stranded on a ski lift with a beautiful stranger named Jane. After strong winds hurl the gondola and throw them down to the ground, Levi calls his parents to, pre to prepare them for the worst, but can't bring himself to say goodbye. Instead, wanting to fulfill his mother's lifelong wish, he impulsively tells her he's happily settled and Jane is his girlfriend, right before his phone dies. But Levi and Jane do not. <laughs> now Levi's family is desperate to, meet, desperate to meet the one, though Jane agrees to be his pretend girlfriend for just one dinner, she's nervous. After a traumatic childhood, Jane isn't sure she knows how to be around a titan family that cherishes one another. She's terrified and a little jealous. But an unexpected series of events and a host of new friends soon show Jane, sh soon show Jane that perhaps this is the life she's always meant to have. As Jane and Levi spend more time together, pretend feelings quickly turn into real ones. If only Jane can admit to herself she can't live without the man she's fallen in love with and the family she has always dreamed of. That sounds... I don't know, it just sounds like my type of story, so I'm here for it. Alright, next I got Volume 4 of Heartstopper. I couldn't resist. I've already read up to, like, everything up to date on the Webtoons app, but I just, I needed the physical manifestation of such a cute story so just completing my collection i mean there's i think there's one more volume that's going to come out but i'm trying to stay up to date with it so here we are next so i read sky hunter in january and so i went out and i bought steel striker by maria lou because oh my goodness sky hunter was so good so i went ahead and just snagged the sequel because i know i'm gonna pick it up sooner rather than later and it's a duology so i know i'll be done once i finish reading this and i'm just i'm here for it i'm here to find out what happens next to these characters as you don't know sky hunter is about a girl who lives in, in the last remaining city that has not been conquered by an enemy um territory 
So she is part of the last line of defense for the city. Uh, she's a part of this group of secret soldiers that go out and kill the monsters that the enemy, enemy territory has created. So one day while they're out, they find a new monster that the enemy has been working on and they manage to turn it to their side. And with that, the, the, they believe, they hope that the war is about to take a turn. So hopefully I explained that correctly, but. Next, I got The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young. I enjoy Adrienne Young's books. I enjoyed her Sky in the Deep duology, and I have her Fable duology, which I want to pick up soon, um, but I stacked this as well because I just couldn't resist. All right, and then I also picked up both of these next two books because um, I'm weird, and the first one was on sale, and then once I got the first one, I was like, well, I might as well get the second one because it's a duology. And so I got Strange the Dreamer and then Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Um, I think I found this somewhere, um, but I wanted the original cover since I got this in the original cover. Um, but I actually don't even know what this is about. I know it's one of Cell and... Monet's favorite um, duology. She's one of their favorite authors. So I figured I would snag it and I kind of just want to go in blind without knowing much because I feel like that could maybe make it even more enjoyable for me, but we'll see. And then I also read Where Dreams Descend in January. So the next book I went ahead and snagged When Night Breaks, which is the last book in this duology as well. Um, so that way I can pick it up when I'm ready to find out what happens next and how this story is going to end. Um, I enjoyed the first book for the most part, but I wanted a little break before I picked this one up. But this is about a girl who has been, I don't want to say trapped, but she's been stuck in this house with the, the son of the master who originally took her in. And every night they've, um, turns the house into like a casino night type of thing where she performs and he teaches her magic and she uses magic to entertain the people. But she's finally decided that she's had enough, she wants more in life and she runs and she basically um, joins this magician's competition in the city um, down the road basically. But what she doesn't realize is that this city has a curse upon it and her entering has solidified the curse. Um, and so from there, she has to compete in the competition and figure out what's going on in the city to the point that they like can't leave, basically. So I've heard it's a Phantom of the Opera retelling and I can kind of see it within the first book. So I'm interested to see how it plays out in this book as well. Next, I got The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. Um, I, again, I don't really know much about this, but this has been on my list for a while, which, which is why I thought it was okay to go ahead and snag it because um, I haven't lost interest in wanting to read it. I've seen how popular the series is, so I definitely want to check it out. All right, next, I got the sequel to uh, The Storm Crow, The Crow Rider, because this was another duology I read in December. Um, I read the first book, so I went ahead and snagged the second book so I could go ahead and finish it. When I get to it, um, as you can see the past two months, I think I've read like a lot of starters to duologies, uh, but I'm hoping to finish them this year because it's only two books and if I don't, then I don't know what's wrong with me. But yeah, so hopefully this will be good. Um, I feel like I've explained the, the, the synopsis of the Stormcrow so many times within the last few videos I've put up. Um, but it's about a girl who lives in a kingdom that has been ravished by the enemy border kingdom. And they also killed off all the crows that have been um, essential into their ki her kingdom thriving. And so in order to save the re like remaining parts of her kingdom, she is sent to live with the neighboring enemy kingdom um, as like a gift so she can get engaged to the prince. Um, but before she leaves, she finds one remaining crow egg that didn't get destroyed. 
and from there she has to basically be on her guard while in this enemy kingdom but also figure out how to crack the egg um and save everybody basically so it was really interesting i'm intrigued to see where this goes but so um i went on a romance buying kick because again i'm in my romance bag so the um first book i got was duke actually by jenny holiday so aaron read this and said it was really good so i wanted to give it a try um i think it's about a duke who's been dumped and he's been sent to new york city and then he meets a professor and they kind of go from there so i'm intrigued by that so i was reading a post or watching a video about um the sunshine grump trope in romance and someone said that a lot like adios by alexis daria um has that trope in it so i wanted to snag it but i didn't feel like i could snag this without reading the first one which was you had me at ola so i just went ahead and grabbed both of them um i think they're both like celebrity romances but I don't want to go into too much detail and read the synopsis because I don't want to... I kind of want to go in and not knowing much about these except for the tropes that they have. <laughs> so I'm here for it. Next one I grabbed was another one off that Sunshine Grump trope list which was Isn't It Bromantic by Lisa K. Adams. I have the first book to this um, companion series, uh, The Bromance Book Club, but I went ahead and snagged this too because they said specifically this one had that trope so i'm gonna go ahead and check it out and see if i like it so next i have peter pan by jm barry so i kind of snagged this mostly because of how pretty like the book itself is i was like you know what this is gorgeous i've never actually read peter pan and it's really short so if i ever need a short classic here we are got it um next monet has been raving about k.a tucker both her fantasy and her contemporary novels. So I went ahead and grabbed um, Say You Still Love Me uh, when I went to Barnes & Noble the other day because I want to give her a chance. I also ordered um, The Simple Wild, the first book as well. I just don't have it here with me because it's in the mail, but I snagged those two because I want to check her out and see if she is as good as Monet says. Next, I got um, a volume four of A Sign of Affection, which I really enjoyed the first three volumes, so I was really hyped when I went into the store and saw this um, because I really love this series. It's about a girl who is deaf and she falls for a hearing man, but he like loves to travel and she finds her world kind of slowly opening up more as she falls more in love with him and she kind of realizes that she's been living in like a bubble almost and she wants to um travel outside of that bubble more and more because she wants to see what he sees but it's really cute i really like it so i'm here for it i'm excited to read this next i was in a weird fantasy mood i guess and i bought a queen in hiding by sarah kozloff so this one's sort of interesting um let's see orphaned exiled and hunted cerulea princella of Werendale must master the magic that is her birthright become a ruthless gorilla fighter and transform into the queen she's destined to be but to do it she must win the favor of the spirits who play in mortal affairs assemble an unlikely group of rebels and wrest the throne from a corrupt astro aristocracy whose rot has spread throughout her kingdom this sounded really interesting one it sounded like it had like kind of like a found family trope and i'm here for it or at least a squad trope and i'm here for it but also i had just finished watching um the witcher and this gave me like a little bit like witcher vibes in the way that um first her name is cerulea and then the girl's name is cerulea and they have to both like master their abilities in order to take back their kingdoms and it just gave me vibes okay it just gave me vibes so I'm here for this. Next, I got Dark Shores by Janelle, Danielle L. Jansen. So um, I really liked her Bridge Kingdom duology, and I want to give her other books a try as well, which is why it's snagged in this one. A Sailor with a Will of Iron. Teriana is the second mate of the Queen Sense, a ship beholden to the goddess of the seas. Her people are born of the waves, and they alone know how to cross the impassable oceans between east and west. A soldier with a secret. 
Marcus is the commander of the 37th, the notorious legion that has led the Cal Calendar Empire to conquer the entire East. The Le legion is his only family, but even they don't know the secret he's been hiding since childhood. A dangerous quest. When an Empire senator discovers the existence of the Dark Shores, he captures Tyrion's crew and threatens to reveal Marcus' a secret unless they sail in pursuit of conquest, forcing the two into, no into an unlikely and unwilling alliance. They unite for the sake of their families, but both must decide how far they are willing to go and how much they are willing to sacrifice. So again, sounds really interesting. And I really like the way Danielle Jensen did um, the kind of hate to love trope in The Bridge Kingdom. So I'm willing to check this out and see if I like the way she does it here too. Next, I also got Song of the Forever Reigns by EJ Mello. I'm gonna read you the synopsis because I don't even know how to describe it. So the Thief Kingdom is a place hidden within the world of Al Adilor. Many whisper of its existence, but few have found this place where magic and pleasure abound. There, the mysterious Thief King reigns supreme with the help of the Musai, a trio of revered and fearsome, feared sorceresses. L Lark Lakaira Bassett may be the youngest of the Musai, but when she sings, her voice has the power to slay monsters. When it is when it's discovered, the Duke of Lachlan is siphoning a poisonous drug from the Thief Kingdom and using it to abuse his tenants. Lark Lakaira is offered her first solo mission to stop the Duke. Either to, eager to prove herself, Lakaira accepts by posing as the Duke's potential bride. But her plans her plans grow complicated when she finds herself drawn to the Lord Darius McKenna, Lachlan's rightful heir. Soon she suspects Darius has his own motivations for writing Lachlan, for ridding Lachlan of the corrupt duke. Lakara and Darius must learn to trust each other if there is to be any hope of saving the people of Lachlan and themselves. Welcome to the world of Adalor, where lords and ladies can be murderers and thieves and the most alluring notes are often the deadliest. I, this sounded intriguing when I read it on Amazon and so it sounds intriguing again when I'm reading it now but I'm here for assassin stories I'm also here for girls who have power and fantasy like they're the more powerful ones in the group so I'm here for that too next I went ahead and snagged realm breaker by Victoria Aveyard um, I snagged this because it's been on my I've been eyeing it for a while since it came out and I figured it was finally time to get it especially because the second book comes out soon so I want to maybe not read it before the second book comes out but I would like to read it at some point this year and see if maybe this is the series that I like because I like the beginning of Red Queen but towards the end that's when it really fell off for me so I'm wondering if maybe it's the series itself or her so I'm willing to give her a second chance with this and see where it goes last um, books I bought are all part of a series and that is the Plated Prisoner series. So I literally just bought this yesterday. Um, I have heard Monet and Cell rave about this series so much and I finally picked up the first one Guild in the from Kindle Unlimited to read one night and I was hooked. So literally the next day I went ahead and just ordered all three of the books in the series that are out so far and I'm just gonna read my way through them because I'm here for it. So um, in case you don't know this is a Midas retelling. Um, this is about a girl named Orin who is King Midas's chosen his his special one and he has put her in this cage for pretty much 10 years and she is in love with him she is enraptured by him but she also um just wants to like protect him and please him and all this kind of stuff so she's i feel like slowly in the first book she starts to realize that midas may not be the same Midas that she trusted all those years ago when they first met. So this is kind of their story. Um, I really love the first one. I know, so Monet and Sal didn't like the first one as much and so they were shocked by my rating of this one, but I really went in with no thoughts, head empty kind of vibes and I was just like, you know what, I had a good time reading this. So I'm gonna just base my rating off that and nothing else. And you can tell, it shows. Um, but also I really love these additions um, but also like I love the fact that even under the jacket the book is just gorgeous and each book is like this um, I'm here for it so now we're gonna go into the books that publisher sent me um, because the stack is pretty small so first Tor sent me where the drowned girls 
Go by Shauna McGuire. I am so happy to have this book. Um, I have been loving the Wayward Children series and so I'm excited to have this one which is, I want to say it's like a continuation slash spinoff and I think it takes place at like another school. Yeah, it takes place at another Wayward school. So I'm here for it. I'm here to learn about the next group of, of, of individuals that that capture my attention with this. Next, I believe it was Simon, I think it was, that sent me the entire series, like ugly series, um, their new covers and stuff. Um, so like, let's see, uglies, pretties, specials, and then extras. So um, I never read this series when I got into reading. It was definitely out but I never really got into it, so I'm here to try and see if it's one I can enjoy. Um, I definitely have a dystopian vlog planned at some point this year, and I have some others that I'm gonna keep secret that I'm planning on incorporating into that vlog along with this series, but I'm definitely here for it. And these covers are really pretty. I really like the colors and the way the faces coordinate and stuff, so. He did a pretty good job. Next, um, I have Queen of the Tiles by uh, Hannah Alcoff. So this was sent to me from Simon as well. So this reminded me of like a Queen Gambit type story, except I believe instead of chess, it's about a girl who is um, really, really good at Scrabble. Also more diverse, so I'm here for that. I also have Sophie and the Bone Song by Adrian Tooley. Um, I believe this is a sapphic story about a girl who's a musician and she ba she's trying to strive for like a specific title or something that her father had and she's in competition with this other girl and I think they like fall in love or something. Anyways, it's a fantasy, YA fantasy romance type story. I think it's enemies to lovers too and it's sapphic so report and it comes out also April of this year. Last book I was sent was Serendipity um, which was edited by Marissa Meyer but the authors are Liz Bryant, Elizabeth Olberg, Leah Johnson, Anne-Marie McLemore, Sonia Menon, Marissa Meyer, Julie Murphy, Kayla Broering, Sarah Winifred Searle, and Abigail Hingween. Um, the reason why I chose this one because I felt like the, the authors they had in this was very diverse. So um, I'm actually really excited to check this out. It's just 10 romantic tropes, a little short story anthology. So let's see the tropes, the fake relationship, stranded together, class warfare, the best friend love epiphany, one bed, the secret admirer, the grand romantic gesture, trapped in a confined space, the makeover, and the matchmaker. That sounds really funny, so I'm excited for that. On to the gifts. The gifts that people were so kind enough to send me for Christmas. Love them. All right, so starting off, Cell, my very, very good friend, sent me three books. They sent me The Poppy War, which I had just been talking to them about like a week before they sent it to me, so love that for them. Uh, love that for me and thank you to them for that. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that this book. I really really don't which is why I wanted to read it because I want to see if it's something I could get into or if it's one I'm gonna have to miss out on. I don't know but I want to give it a chance and check it out. Next they also sent me A Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson. Um, I know this has vampires and it's definitely very adult fantasy romance but that's all i really know and kind of all i want to know going in especially because it's so short so i'm here for it but i know people were, were raving about it mina cell i think even aaron so i'm i'm here to check it out then next um they sent me my blood by casey keen which is one i've already read um but thank you to them for that. then i uh got Two books from my very, very good friend, Michelle, from Michelle Reads YA. Thank you to her for that. I love her and her channel. She's so fun. You should check out her channel at some point. I'll link her down below. She sent me 10 Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston. So this is a continuation companion novel from the first book, 10 Blind Dates. I really thought that movie, that, not movie, I thought the book was really adorable. I thought it was fun. I loved the family and the humor in it. So I'm really here for um, continuing on into this story. So I think it follows the 
main character of the first book's cousin and so I'm I'm really excited to read this and get back into that family because just they were just hilarious and I loved it so I'm definitely here for it um, I don't really remember the synopsis to this but that's okay I'm just gonna kind of go, go in without knowing much next she also sent me Finley Donovan is killing it uh, by El Cas Casimano so Erin said she thought I would really like this which is why I put it on my wish list um, I wasn't really expecting it to get it wasn't really expecting to get it but I'm glad I have it because from what I've heard it sounds like a really interesting story I believe this is about a lady who she's a writer like a mystery writer or something and I think she is down on her luck and I think she's in a coffee shop one day either on the phone with her publisher or talking to her publisher in person and they're talking about the topic of her book like the synopsis or the plot or whatever and I guess this other lady overhears and thinks that the main character is actually like an assassin <laughs> based off the conversation she overhears so as the main character is sitting in this coffee shop and her editor leaves the lady approaches her and um, basically <laughs> Uh, asks her basically propositions her to kill her husband <laughs> and so I think the whole book is the main character trying to prove to this lady that she's not an assassin like she's not a hit man or hit woman but every time she tries to prove it something happens that makes the lady believe it the story more and I'm kind of here for it. It sounds like it's going to be a really funny read. So I'm definitely down to check this out and see if it can be a good uh, thriller. I definitely haven't delved into the adult thriller genre yet really. So I am kind of excited for this to be like my first jump into it. Because it's honestly the only one I own. Thank you to Sh Michelle for those two books. Um, next, Mina sent me uh, Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren, another book by them, which is probably going to be in the vlog that I mentioned earlier in this video. I'm definitely here to check this out and see how I enjoy it. My best friend Val, um, she sent me like six books, uh, but I only had, I only have one here because I think the, uh, the rest at my mom's house, but she, the first book she sent me was Relentless, which is book one in the um, Relentless series by Karen Lynch. I've already read this, but I wanted a physical copy, which is why I put it on my wish list. And she was nice enough to send it to me. So I'm excited to have the first book and get, eventually get the rest of the series to own on my shelves. So then also Val sent me um, Lord of Shadows, Ghosts of the Shadow Market, and Assassin's Blade. I think I left those at home because I'm just not anywhere close to being ready to read those yet. But she's basically completed my Cassie Clare collection until the next Cassie Clare book comes out. So thank you to her for that because I definitely needed the kick in the butt to start uh, getting into those books and my plan and everything. Next, Erin, my roomie from Booked and Busy, um, we did like a little roomie Christmas exchange. So she got me three books as well. She got me uh, The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson, which is the second book to the Miss Born trilo trilogy. Um, I enjoyed the first book for the most part. I gotta go back and reread because <laughs> I sped listen to the audio and there were lots of things that I missed that I need to go back and pick back up and hopefully consume normally. But um, I think I'm at the point where I'm willing to give the second book a chance in this trilogy and see what else happens in this story. Um, but we'll see. Not anytime soon, but at some point this year I want to pick it up again and check it out. He then sent me Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, which I've really already read. I think Tessa Bailey is just a new favorite author of mine now, especially romance-wise, so I'm really here for it. Um, this is a really cute read. It's like a short story, like a little novella um, about a man who owns a department store and a woman who just got out of jail. And he's like this peppy man who wears like funky bow ties and she's like a goth. <laughs> He is enraptured by her the first time he sees her and he hires her to be a window dresser for his store and from there they fall in love and I love it so much. 
Okay, my camera's about to die, so let me hurry up. So the last book Aaron got me was A Lady at Works Grave Manor. Stella and Aaron have raved about this, so has Mina. It's by Catherine Moon, who we all love, who did Lola and the Millionaires. So I'm hyped to ch check this out and see if it's good. And the last book I got was from Jess, from um, Jessica Noble Dickerson. So thank you to her for sending me this. She sent me The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. Um, this is, I think it's sci-fi, romance, sci-fi, something, something. So... I'm here for it. I think it's about two sisters who are separated by time, space, and whatever else difficulties, and they're trying to find each other. And I'm here for it. I'm excited to see. I've heard good things, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so that is the haul I have for you. Sorry this is so long. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, emojis, whatever, leave that in the comment section down below. If you like the video, give it a good old thumbs up. If you, uh, you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. You are all subscribers in the world full of tweets. Okay, bye.